a pleasant good day once again to all of my YouTube fans across my globe. It, it always brings me great pleasure to stand before you and to present to you. Those who have supported us, we thank you. Those who are new to us, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. So as usual, we greet you. I, Emo Ramistis Bakari, your psychologist and life coach from the magical community of Point Forte in Trinidad and Tobago, located in the Southern Caribbean. It is my desire to inspire you to rise higher. It is my desire to inspire you to rise even higher. It is my desire to inspire you to perform a distinction. And it is my desire to partner with you to ensure that your dreams become a reality in 2024. And this will be done through counseling, through coaching, through writing, through feature speaking, through motivational speaking, public speaking, and community development. Because after all, you are deserving of becoming the best possible versions of yourself. My motivational word today, if you are first, let no one make you believe that you are last. If you are first on planet Earth, make no one make you believe that you are last. So, the reason why I am doing this presentation, I will be referencing the work of one Kali Wright who spoke about mathematical achievement in Africa. And it's a very um, interesting article that can be found online, all right? So the title, of the presentation today is mathematical facts in Africa that you may not be aware of. As we all know, when we go back in ancient civilization, you know, mathematics was always our playground, you know. The construction of the pyramids, you know, you know, constituted the use of the highest level of mathematics. We, we know of the ancient pharaoh Imhotep, who was considered the first mathematician, physician, diviner, poet, high priest, architect, etc. And, you know, mathematics was already the foundation of those societies. And those of us who are from African ancestry, we need to become aware of those facts. And we need to be inspired by those facts to know that if we were first, it was never made to believe that you were last. Because the evidence is irrefutable that Africa is the birthplace of man. And if Africa is the birthplace of man, well then, you need to stand like a man, meaning man or woman, and exhibit that confidence. So, Carly Wright made some interesting points that I would just like to reference. And so you're saying that the oldest mathematical games in the world existed in Africa. There were storyboard games based on the principles of mathematics. She also said that the oldest mathematical artifact in the world, the Limbobo board that was found in the Limbobo mountains near Swaziland, is as much as 35,000 years old, again giving an indication of the progress of Africans with mathematics. She reported that digital systems were developed off of African cultural patterns. Carly Wright also reported that many of the hunter-gatherers were able to locate animals by identifying the shape of their poop, all right? Many of the people in the area south of the Sahara, according to Kali Wright, the adults in those communities, they had the mathematical understanding. 
the design sense and construction skills to construct their own homes. Many of the concepts of geometry and the symmetry of patterns were manifested in that region in terms of artistic expression in the construction of homes, in the construction of piping systems, and in the construction of baskets. The Yoruba of Nigeria developed their own unique counting system in units of 20 rather than 10. The people in the Niger Delta of that area, they had a, 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 a very um, significant way of um, dealing with numbers. And the number seven, which had a, a, a significant divine concept, was not just expressed as seven, but as six plus one. So when we, when we reference uh, those points that I have made, you know, and there are so many more in the context of, you know, mathematical progress, these points have been made in this presentation to encourage African people all over the world to know that mathematical and scientific progress, those things are within your DNA. And the reason why I'm saying that there are many people of any ethnicity who have skills in all areas that I've mentioned here. But I know a number of persons who never saw the door of a school and they can build any building of any type that have stood the test of time. And that has to be a question of knowledge transmitted in their DNA over time to give them that kind of knowledge and that ability to exercise that knowledge. So there is no need to be fearful of mathematics, because as you can see, they were able to use mathematics in real life. And many of the teachers of mathematics, one of the mistakes that they make, they do not relate it to real life. And if you relate it to real life, you will get a greater interest, you will probably get a greater understanding. And these were some of the things that the traditional Africans did. Another point Kali Wright made is that based on the geometry and symmetrical arrangement on cloths, they were able, based on those things, to identify which particular ethnic group were the ones responsible for designing cloth. They also grew shells, which they used as a form of currency. So they were innovative, they were unique, they related mathematical concepts to life, and they equipped people in, in, their, in their communities with those skills that they express. As I mentioned, the people of Southern Sahara use their mathematical knowledge to build their homes and to express it in other ways of life. And so too, you must be able to have the confidence to know that you can perform. You have performed. Your ancestors have performed at the highest level in the use of mathematics, in, in the construction of the pyramids, in, in, in all of the examples that I've cited and more in other presentations that we will talk about, to know that you have the confidence to perform. But within the whole school arrangements in Trinidad and the Caribbean, there's a, there's a great need for the curriculum to change, that we can inspire people from different groups to have that confidence to know that they can perform and that they are not lesser than anybody else. So I'd like to thank Kali Wright for producing that article and for bringing those facts to the fore and for you listeners and viewers to reflect on it, to review on it, because many of those things you may not have been aware of before. We thank you for listening. We thank you for viewing. And of course, we remind you to subscribe to our channel, like, share, comment on the video. We ask of you to support our channel. Feel free and contribute any amount financially to our YP and Patreon links. Feel free and, and contribute by partaking in our ongoing courses, by you know, booking a counseling or coaching appointment, or by purchasing any of the advertisements. So once again, we thank you for listening. We thank you for reflecting on the topic today. And rest assured, we'll be here to provide more facts and more inspiration. So we ask you, continue supporting us and stay tuned.
for another powerful presentation next week. Please God.